several months now, I, as your captain, have been in clandestine correspondence with an old friend of mine, Beryl Domain of the Parks and Recreation Department, Here. regarding the sole acquisition All of this our very own will be out. Ground. Miriam! I have a dream! Also, uh, it is with particular delight that I welcome Beryl Dumain of the Parks and Recreations Department, without whose assistance and encouragement the opening of this, our very own ground, would have remained little more than a uh, thingy in, um, in your skipper's, uh, what's it? Here, here. Applause, applause. Thank you, Beryl. Roger. Miriam, please. I'm rehearsing my inaugural speech. Well, rehearse it in the car, darling, or we'll be late. Come along, chop chop. <laughs> Maggie! What? Phone! We'll answer it. I can't, can I? Maggie? It's me, Miriam. Hello. Just checking that Kevin's on schedule for the 1047 pickup. <laughs> Hang on a minute. It's Miriam. She wants to know if you're on schedule for the 1047 pickup. Really? He says everything's under control. 1047 it is. Bye, Miriam. I thought it was 1147. <laughs> With hope in my heart and uh, thingy um, in my watching, that I now declare this pavilion well and truly open. Good. Well? Well, what, darling? Well, what do you think? About what, darling? My speech, Mim. My inaugural speech. Oh, that's really rather super, Rod. <laughs> but it won't be quite that long, will it? I mean, you won't be using all your excerpt from Henry V, will you? Miriam. You cannot tinkle with Shakespeare. Orson Welles did. Orson Welles was not captain of Brent Park Cricket Club. <laughs> <laughs> Our very own pavilion. I never thought I'd see the day, Min. Neither did I, darling. Neither did I. <laughs> you and me, eh, Mim? The team. How do I look? Come here. You should wear a tie more often. You look really elegant. Don't matter about that. Just remember, this man is a living legend. So when you meet him, behave yourself. Tuck your shirt in. Surely, my love. Before we arrive, I want to make quite sure that you are fully cognizant vis a vis the approach I have decided to take regarding you know what. What if they say something? Just promise me, Shirley, my love. Skip. Morning, Miriam. 
Morning, Dennis. Morning, Shirley. Yes, and with the prospect of sun all day, according to the forecast. Anyway, here we are, nice and early. Far be it from me, Dennis, but you assured me that you'll be here at 10 1500 hours on the dot, and it is now 10.35. Well, 10.45, we say, Skip. Dennis, it's on my schedule. Anyway, they're here now, aren't they? So that's super, isn't it? Would you like to help me with the bunting, Shirley? What a good idea. Working with the hands is so therapeutic, don't you agree? Come along, then. <clears throat> Let's have a look at it, then. Shall we see Jim 45, Skip? Mr. Evans? Godfrey, please. Oh, it's terrific of you to spare us the time. Not at all. I'm delighted. No, it is. It's terrific. I'm Kevin, by the way. Kevin Costello. I'm your courier. This is Maggie. Hello, Godfrey. Hello, Maggie. Oh. This is big, isn't she, eh, Godfrey? Not that big, am I, Godfrey? Of course you are. <laughs> Not as big as Wesley Hall, though, eh, Godfrey? <laughs> Be quiet, you silly little person. I've heard all about you, you know, Godfrey. You and your fantastic performances. <laughs> <laughs> Seem a trifle unhappy, Skip? No, 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 Dennis. He's, he's very... You know... What's he? But my only concern is whether it is up to the numbers projected. Oh, well, now, Skip, I did mention that to my contact, and he assures me that capacity-wise, this particular model is spot on. Mm. He should know, shouldn't he, being an expert in the field? Well, precisely my point, Dennis. What is Skip saying? Well, with the size of this thing, we'll all become experts in the field, since that's where most of us will end up doing it. <laughs> Very good, Skip. Yeah, touche. <laughs> <laughs> However, uh, for the time being, um, uh, Dennis, the thing is to get this thing unloaded. Well, the way I see it, um, is that if we both... Morning, Nigel! You busy at the moment, are you? Uh, well, I've only just arrived, actually, Skip. Well, the thing is to get this thing unloaded while I go and have a word with the vicar. Super! Super! What is it? in ten minutes. <laughs> Super! Oh, there you are, Dennis. <laughs> There you are, Mim. And as delightful as ever. Dennis Broadley. Everything's going according to plan. So Mim's the word, eh, Dennis? Vis are these what, my love? Vis are these Roger and Mr. X. Oh, Mr. X. I thought the opening ceremony was at 12 o'clock. No, 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 Vicar. 1300 hours, I said. Look, it's all here in black and white. Because I have a christening, you see. Yes, well, that's all very well, Vicar. Uh, John, please. Yes, well, that's all very well, um, John. But any problems, and I suggest you tell the parents, their child has the rest of its life to get its head wet, whereas I am working to a very tight schedule. Anyway, where was I? Um, oh, yes. Now, at 12.55 hours, you will leave here at the head of the Church Brigade Boys Band, consisting, I believe, of mass bugles, pipes and drums. Well, not exactly mass. Well, whatever. They will march from here, playing something suitably uplifting as they go. Boom de boom de boom. Hello, Robert. We didn't think you'd be coming. Hello, Mim. Why's that? Oh, what with the new baby and everything, we thought you'd be busy. Ginny wanted me out of the house, you know, out from under her feet. Anyway, couldn't miss a big day like this, could I? Well, that's very supportive of you, Robert. How is she, by the way, Ginny and the baby? 
How's that beautiful baby boy of yours? They're both, you know, fine, great. Oh, you must be so proud. I am, yes. Super. Well, in case you're wondering, he's on his way, Mr X. Oh, it's so exciting, isn't it? Fantastic. I mean, look at the state of this strip. I slept under flattered duvets. Oh, I don't know. It's not that bad, surely. And look at the pavilion. No lavatories, no proper cooking facilities, no telephone. Frankly, I don't know why we moved, other than to give Captain Fantastic another toy to play with. I don't think that's fair. Sorry. I don't give a monkey's what you think. Sorry. As soon as the hygiene and cleansing department meant private, my colleagues stepped in and bought them all as a job lot. Initiative, you see. Initiative. Of which I had more than my fair share until it was drained out of me by living with you-know-who. Morning, Alex, old son. Nice to see you. Minus the fiancé, I notice. And the fiancé, as you so charmingly put it, is at this very moment some 30,000 feet above the Pyrenees. On a broomstick. <laughs> what is that appalling smell? Ah, yes, of course. Nappies. Stop! Oh, that's charming, that is. And we got a guest. He said stop, didn't he, Godfrey? So I stopped. The thing is, as you know, Godfrey, Roger doesn't know you're coming, so if you could, you know... Keep cavey till I make sure the coast is clear. Oh, absolutely. You're a prince. Behave yourself. Two minutes. Sorry about all the subterfuge, Godfrey. No problem. You're his hero, you know, Roger. Funny, that. Always thought Roger was Roger's hero. <laughs> Love you too. All right, okay, fair enough. What be a jiffy? Excuse me, Nigel. Where are you going? Well, I was not in... until I have officially declared it open. Oh, sorry, Nigel. Ah, oh, burial. How very nice to see you. And accompanied, I see, by the gentleman of the press. <laughs> You mean you've left him in the car with Maggie? It's all right, ma'am. I've handcuffed to the wheel. The thing is, to get him inside the pavilion without Rog knowing... What we need is a diversion. You're right. Leave it to me. What do I call him? Godfrey. Godfrey. Godders. Godders. Sir Godders. I didn't know he was a sir. That's not on his letter heading. Yeah, well, he's like that, isn't he, old Godders? <gasps> sir Godders. Just that natural. How do you mean, that natural? Well, you know, no genuflecting or anything, unless it comes natural. Right, right. I'm going all day, you know, Bob. Why can't you just tell me here? Because I don't think it's fair to discuss it in front of the others. Club morale, Skipper. Club morale? Right. Good morning, Sir Godders. I'm Miriam, the captain's wife. It is I with whom you have corresponded. And may I say straight away how thrilled I am that you've chosen to honour us with your presence on this very special day. My husband, bless him, will be over the moon. Mm. Well, it was just there. What was? A fox. Look, you can see the hole. It's a drain pipe. The thing is, Skip, people hunt them, you know. What? Foxes. That's what I mean, Skip, about team morale. What is? Well, some of them might not approve. Of? Blood sports. Perhaps I should bring it up at the next committee meeting. You should be all right in here, Sir Godders. It'll only be for a few moments, won't it? Um, I'll just get someone to stand guard, and then I'll be back to offer you some refreshment. <laughs> or something stronger. Ooh. <laughs> Do sit down. It's just Godfrey. All right. He's being ever so accommodating. 
accommodating. Oh. But I hate subterfuge, don't you? Ah, oh, get used to it when you live with a sneaky little twerp like I do. <laughs> Would you read my sign writing? This pavilion was opened on 29th April 95 by Godfrey Evans, CBE, in the presence of the club captain, R.J. Dervish, his wife, Miriam, and members of the team. Oh, that's lovely, Maggie. That's really lovely. Hey, good, isn't it? That is. That's really... You've missed out the sir. <laughs> I don't understand what you're saying, saying Skip. Sorry. What I'm saying is, what I am saying is that whilst appreciating your obvious love of nature and all things natural, I fail to see what. Yes, Skip. What if I might have a word, Skip? What about the fox? That's it, Skip. The fox. I think I've heard all I need to hear about foxes of all shapes, colours, and so on. Everything all right, um, Godfrey? What story? The story of the young Spartan lad who was confronted by his mother with a fox up his jerkin. It was only a young fox, of course, but nevertheless, this sort of behaviour was forbidden in those days. And rather than incur the wrath of his mother, the young lad said nothing. He just stood there, the fox playing havoc with his abdominals. He died, of course. But no one could deny his self control. It is my belief, Skipper, that were you to be caught with a fox up your jerkin or double-breasted blazer, as it will be nowadays, you too would exhibit the same self-control. And for that, I thank you. Do you like it, Maggie? I do. It's very, um... Colourful. I embroidered it myself. My therapist encourages me in all manner of pursuit. There. Let us now hope that Roger doesn't peak. I think he peaked about 20 years ago. <laughs> Sorry. No, you're quite right. You mustn't see it. So guard it with your life, eh, Shirl? I can't tell you how devious I've had to be, making sure he didn't find out. Oh, he'll be so excited, Godfrey. I can't wait to see the look on his face. Miriam! He's coming back. I don't think we can ask Godfrey. Can we, Godfrey? All right with me. Sorry, uh, yeah. I've got to enjoy it. You are. Give me. Sorry. Right. Are we all assembled then? Yes. yes. Yeah. Excellent. Everything all right, Miriam? He's addressing the troops. Oh, uh, not his night before Argencourt. Probably. <laughs> anyway, enough to keep him occupied so we can, you know. Surprise, surprise. Right. That a girl, Shell. At approximately 13.25, I'll be calling upon the vicar to make the blessing, after which it's all down to an inter-club five aside. Excuse me, Skip. Uh, yes, Kevin. When you say a blessing, do I take it we're talking about a Christian ceremony? Uh, C of E, yes. Because I was wondering about Iqbal. What about Iqbal? I'll take your point, Kev. Iqbal not being in the Christian persuasion. Right. Right, Iqbal? Right. Needless to say, I will have a word it's only me, Godfrey. Well, it's not only Iqbal, is it? What about Nigel? What about Nigel? You're Jewish, aren't you, Nigel? Only on my father's side, which doesn't count, actually. Sorry. 
Nevertheless, Skip, you can see the offence in White Calls. <laughs> we'll just have to delay the ceremony. You all right in there, Godfrey? Um, I'm a bit worried about the time. We can't delay it. It's got to get you half past two train. Besides, there's Roger's schedule. <laughs> Chin up, Godfrey. <sighs> I don't know what I can do. The lock's completely jammed. We need a cutter. Fourteen thousand eight hundred and eighty-two first-class runs, Miriam. Yes, I know, darling. Eight hundred and sixteen catches. I know. Two hundred and fifty stumpings. Yes. And you, Miriam, have locked him in a portable convenience. Yes, Roger. Might I just say, might I just say that I am your greatest fan. That's very nice of you, Roger. Thank you. I have a picture of you on my bedside table so that in the dark uncertainty of the wee small hours, I may turn to you for comfort. That's nice. But the thing is, you see, Roger, I've got a train to catch. Well, there's only one answer, isn't there? Which is what, Kev? Sorry. Which is that if Mohammed, i.e. Godfrey Evans, cannot come to the mountain, i.e. the pavilion, then Godfrey Evans, i.e. the mountain, must come to the pavilion, i.e. Mohammed. Super! Pardon? A man to whom I personally owe my undiminishing love for the game of cricket. A man who has come here today to spend a few hours encouraging those who can only dream of cricketing greatness. And so that it is, with great pride, that I call upon you, Godfrey, to cut the ribbon. Hip, hip, hip. Hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! hooray! to meet him, darling. You know, face to face. He was here, Nick. That's the main thing. He was here. Then Mrs. Mann says that with a blowtorch from Crowbar, I should have him out of there in no time. Oh, in time to catch his train, anyway. Rog, hmm? he said to give you this. He says he hopes they'll serve you as well as they served him. You go. What a start to the season, Amy. What a start. Yes, darling. What a start. <laughs> <laughs> 